Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning worship at St George's Deal. Uh, it's so good to be with you this morning and uh, it's been lovely watching people coming on the chat here. So if you haven't done that yet, come on and say hello. And it's a cold one, isn't it? The fields are certainly white this morning, um, as is everything else really. And even with the misty conditions we've got outside, the world looks pretty beautiful this morning out there. However, it's been a tough week for many. Uh, we're now in lockdown three. Parents are back into homeschooling. Teacher, teachers are juggling all kinds of balls in the air. And very, very sadly, the death rate continues to rise. And it's January. And I just wanted to start this morning by saying, you know, it's OK to say, actually, I'm not okay. <laughs> it's okay to say things are not okay. Things just feel a bit rubbish at the moment. And of course, that's because they are rubbish at the moment. And, you know, God loves our honesty, doesn't he? He knows how things are. He knows how we're feeling anyway. So let's just begin by saying how we feel this morning, but then allowing God to, to lift our heads so that like the great King David, no matter what the circumstances, we can say, is to my rock, my God, the rock of my salvation, be exalted. But let's begin with some, some pertinent words from Psalm 29, verses 9 to 10. Psalm 29, 9 to 10. It says, the Lord rules over the floodwaters. The Lord reigns as king forever. The Lord gives his people strength. The Lord blesses them with peace. And we pray we'll all know that reality this morning as we gather together. We've got Robbie opening up the scriptures for us, um, so we can look forward to that this morning. Johnny is going to say a little bit about what he got up to before Christmas. Uh, Lisa is bringing a message for all ages, and Liz is going to lead us, lead us in prayer. So let's begin by praying and opening up our hearts to allow God to minister to us this morning as we come to him. So let's pray. Father, we come to you this morning just as we are. We come with our concerns, with our fears, with our disappointments, and we ask that you will meet with us in them. We pray that you will speak to us again of your hope, your love, your grace, and we thank you for who you are and for your goodness towards us. Holy Spirit, come and give us that hope and peace as you speak to us and minister to us now. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 to 23. Jesus walked next to Lake Galilee, and as he did so, he saw two brothers called Simon and Andrew. Simon and Andrew were fishermen. They threw big nets into the lake, and when they were full of fish, they dragged them up to the beach. Jesus watched them for a few minutes, and then he called out to them. Instead of catching fish, why don't you come and help me? You can catch people instead of fish. Simon and Andrew must have thought this sounded really funny. Did Jesus want them to throw their nets over people and catch them? No, of course he didn't. What he wanted them to do was to help him tell others about God, so they could get to know God like he did. Well, Simon and Andrew immediately said yes. They left their nets on the beach and went with Jesus. Jesus carried on walking along the beach, and then he saw two more brothers called James and John. They were in a boat with their dad, Zebedee. They were busy mending their nets, ready for their next fishing trip. Jesus called out to James and John, Come with me, come and follow me. 
join my team of helpers. Immediately they jumped out of their boat and came with Jesus. So how many people did Jesus have in his team of helpers then? There was Simon, Andrew, James and John, and he had eight other special friends and helpers too. But the story doesn't end there because Jesus wants everyone to be his followers and friends. And since he first asked Simon, Andrew, James and John, millions and millions of people have decided to follow him and become his friend. This reminds me of that song we sometimes sing, The Big Family of God. Do you remember? Some of us are big and tall, some of us are really small, some of us like pink and some like blue. That's because we're different, me and you. So Jesus didn't just choose important people or rich people to be his friends. He chose fishermen and everyday normal people. And he still wants to be friends with everyday normal people like you and like me, whether we're big or small. Good morning everyone at St George's Church. I would say it's nice to see you again. However, even though I can't see you, I hope you're well and safe. All I can say really is it's nice to be talking to you again. Today I've been asked to talk about what I did on Christmas Eve. At first I was so ignorant about the humanitarian crisis which was taking place on our doorstep over the Christmas period the thousands of lorries queuing through South East Kent trying to cross the channel. 4,000 lorries were parked up at Manson Airport with about 3,000 more stuck in Dover when I went to visit on Christmas Eve. 
Jill Martin, a good friend who runs the town kitchen takeaway business, asks me if I'd like to accompany her in serving her Kentish knocker pasties to all the hungry lorry and truck drivers. It was an honour to be asked. Initially, I had so many doubts about going. Is it safe to be giving out food in these times? Will I end up being stuck in Dover and being unable to come back to record the Chris Dingle service for the evening? Is it even worth me going? Because surely other people will have this in hand. In the end, I put an end to my questions and doubts by simply saying yes and committing to it. If everyone ended up not being able to go because of having these similar thoughts and doubts, no one would be there to help and nothing would have ended up being done. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 27 I feel encapsulates this really well. It says, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to act. As followers of God, if we are able, we should always do what we can in order to become slightly more like Jesus. Whether that's going out of your comfort zone to feed the hungry, whether that's doing something for a loved one, doing something, especially at Christmas time, is a step in the right direction, even if it is a drop in the ocean, feeding just a hundred lorries out of thousands and thousands and thousands. Unfortunately, unlike Jill, cooking is not one of my fortes. However, after advertising on my social media, neighbours, old school friends and church friends messaged me saying they'd be delighted to give me donations to pass on to the lorries. Homemade muffins, fresh fruit and so much more were so generously given to me. The Jewicks even managed to get our work mentioned on Radio 1 as well as making so many wonderful muffins. I parked near the castle and from there Jill and I walked down with our bags full of food to the port. It was really disturbing to see how starving, dehydrated, yet so appreciative the drivers were for such basic necessities. I spoke to one lorry driver who hadn't eaten in four days. Another who was massively dehydrated after it taking him three days to drive from Canterbury to Whitfield. And a young woman who was starving and emotional not to be with her children in Scandinavia this Christmas. This really disturbed me. It's the sort of thing you see on adverts, but not the sort of thing you see happening on our doorstep in Deal. It made me realise we need to open our eyes more to what's happening around us locally. We can act close to home as well as far away. Sadly, what disturbed me in equal measure was the media's response. The media outlined how they were getting hot food they had toilet and shower facilities, but this was not the case from my first-hand experience. We fed about 100 people, which at the time felt like a drop in the ocean. However, earlier in the week when driving through Dover to see the no longer congested streets, it made me realise it really is an answer to prayer that the lorries managed to get to the continent. Stay safe and I hope to see as many of you as I can as soon as possible. God bless and see you soon. Good morning, I'm Robbie and this morning I would like us to think some more about St George's vision for 2021. I wonder if you were listening to Chris last week. He led us to a verse in Paul's first letter in, to the church in Thessalonica, chapter 2, verse 8. We loved you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well, because you had become so dear to us. All or most of that verse is to be our St. George's verse of 2021, and it's the key to carrying out the three aims that Chris brought before us. They all start with R. 
Raising Missionary Disciples, Releasing Emerging Generations and Reimagining the Church. A good description of Paul's own church planting and church building technique comes clearly in this morning's passage. Indeed, it's God's plan for ongoing evangelism through local churches. So let's look at the passage. I do hope you will read it along with me and keep it open as we think on it. It's very helpful to me if you have the verses in front of you as I refer to them. It's 1 Thessalonians, the first chapter and the first five verses. To the Church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. We always thank God for you all of you, mentioning you in our prayers. We continually remember before our God, our Father, your work produced by faith, your labour prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. First, some brief background to the writing of this letter. This was a very new church and already facing persecution. Paul had planted this church on his first missionary journey, about 50 or 51 AD. Thessalonica was one of the wealthiest and most influential cities in Macedonia, with a population of about 200,000 at the time. Paul's message had attracted, unusually, a large group of socially prominent citizens. The church grew quickly, but very soon, Paul was forced to flee out of the city for his life by a mob. Paul had been travelling with Silas and Timothy, and he later sent Timothy back to Thessalonica to see how the Christians were doing. You can read the story of its founding in Acts chapter 17. As one commentator puts it, this church is only a few months old. Its members are newborn Christians freshly converted from either Judaism or paganism. Their Christian convictions have been newly acquired, their Christian moral standards have been recently adopted, and they are being sorely tested by persecution. You would expect, would you not, it to be a very wobbly church in a very precarious position. Not so. Paul has described this church in his greeting as in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul has confidence because it's God's church and he can have confidence in God. And Paul explains this in three ways and I will follow his lead. So firstly, the church is a community which lives in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. That's part of Paul's greeting, but it is not a mere polite greeting. In all his opening greetings in the letters he wrote to the churches, this greeting is unique. He could have just written to the Church of God in Thessalonica. Yes, it's a church of God, our God, living in the culture of Thessalonica. But he didn't. This is the church of the Thessalonians in God and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Perhaps he could feel the insecurity of the young and persecuted church and he wanted to remind them that in the midst of their trials, their security is in God. It is from being in God that every church derives its life, its strength and its stability. That is, or should be true of us too, here in St George's. We too are the church of the deal folk in God and in our Lord Jesus Christ. Think back to Jesus' reference of himself. 
as the vine and ourselves as the branches in John chapter 15. That's the kind of relationship of this church to God and it should be for us too. Or Paul's description in 1 Corinthians 12 as ourselves as limbs or organs as members of the body. It's a close and interdependent relationship, dependent on God and working with each other to function as the church. Second, this Thessalonian church is a community distinguished by the three Christian virtues, faith, hope and love. Why is Paul, as we see in verse 2, constantly praying for this church whenever he remembers them? He's not only praying for their survival, he's praising God for their work produced by faith, their labour prompted by love and their endurance inspired by hope in the Lord Jesus. This is in verse 3. They are all outgoing characteristics. Faith is directed towards God, love towards others both within the church fellowship and outside it, and hope is directed towards the future, in particular the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ in glory, our sure hope. So faith, hope and love are sure evidence of regeneration, of new birth by the Holy Spirit. They are all outgoing, but they are also productive. Faith, hope and love can sound a bit abstract, but they have practical, concrete results. Notice the use of the word labour. This is not easy. It can be hard work to show the love of the Lord in a harsh and unbelieving culture such as they were facing and as we are facing daily in Deal. And endurance. This is not just an easy waiting for something to happen. The Greek word translates as patient fortitude in the face of opposition. I guess the challenge for us as we work towards our vision for 2021 is how well do we at St George's fit this description of the Thessalonians. I have been very blessed in my career to have been able to work in countries where to become a Christian is labelled apostasy from the state religion and can result in death. And yet people want to know about Jesus. And why? They see the love of the Lord Jesus in the lives of those who are, who are believers. They see love in action of those who follow Jesus. They see their shining faith and their calm and certain hope for the future. I look back to a preschool I worked in where we were not able to openly proclaim Jesus, though I think most parents were aware of the Christian faith of the staff. The cook and the cleaners, however, were not Christian believers. But within weeks of starting work, the dear lady who was cook begged to be able to join the short Bible study held every morning for the staff before classes. Why? Because of the lived witness of the teachers, most of whom were refugees and struggling in a foreign land and culture. Well, I move quickly on to the third reason Paul can have confidence in the, the Thessalonian church. The church in this passage is a community, not just living in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ, not just a community of true faith, hope and love, but thirdly, it's a community which is loved and chosen by God. This is verse 4, and it's really the title of this talk this morning, Chosen by God. For we know, brothers and sisters, loved by God, that he has chosen you. Isn't that wonderful? I can say that about you all, all who are listening to me, that I know, brothers and sisters, that you are loved by God, that he has chosen you. And why can I say that? I do see the evidence in the fellowship at St George's 
I see the outworking of the Holy Spirit. I do see it in the labor of love of those who prepare these services and the Wednesday service and the daily prayers, day by day, week by week. Those who do the children's talks and lead the worship songs and especially those who sort out all the necessary IT arrangements. I do see it in the shining faith of those who patiently endure the difficulties of ill health and old age because of the glorious hope they have in the coming of the Lord Jesus. Or I see it in those who've patiently endured the horrendous difficulties of the last year and can still think of and pray consistently for others. All these things are evidence of the Holy Spirit's work in those who are loved and chosen by him. Finally, after thinking about these three characteristics of the Church of God, we now arrive at verse 5. And we begin to think about the gospel of God and how it multiplies. And this is again where our vision for St. George's can find an example in Paul's writing to this new church in Thessalonica. He says, Because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with deep conviction, there was evidence that they were chosen and loved in what happened. So the gospel creates the church, which spreads the gospel, which creates more churches, which in their turn spread the gospel. It's a New Testament blueprint that has taken place over the centuries and which is still continuing today. The question for us really depends on our taking to heart the last part of verse 5. You know how we lived among you, for your sake. This was not the evangelist traveling into the city, holding a rally with lovely music and inspiring preaching which bring forth to faith and leaving it at that. No, this is sacrificial sharing of the gospel, sacrificial evangelism, emanating from the practical faith and labor and endurance that we read about before. Says Paul, we lived among you for your sake. As we study the rest of this wonderful epistle over the next weeks and months, we will discover how Paul lived among them, how he modelled Christ to them, how he taught them and loved them and encouraged them. I pray it will be an encouragement to us to be a community chosen and loved by God, living out our faith, in a hostile world and culture, not only for ourselves and our fellowship, but for the sake of those whom God has chosen in deal to be part of his church. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come humbly before you, knowing how hard it is to live out the gospel in our culture. And Lord, we need your help. Please help us to learn from how Paul loved and reached and encouraged this young church all those years ago. And please help us to be obedient to your desire for us to share and live out the gospel, the good news here in Deal or wherever you may send us. And we ask it for the glory of the Lord Jesus and for the extension of your kingdom. Amen.
Morning. Shall we pray together? Heavenly Father, creator, sustainer and giver of life, as we come before you today, please renew your living presence in us and allow our hearts to be open to your transforming power. Amongst the vastness and complexity of the universe, the earth is barely a speck of dust. But your word became flesh and dwelt with us as your son. Help us to respect the delicate balance of life and the environment. To delight in the beauty and the design of nature as created and entrusted by you. Our world is troubled by disease, violence, pride, poverty and pollution. Yet you do not turn your back on us. You are Emmanuel. You choose to live with us and in us. As we continue our fight against the pandemic of coronavirus and its disease COVID-19, we thank you for the advantage of science and for the vaccines that have now been developed. We pray for wisdom, efficiency and diligence in their distribution and use and a restoration of health around the world. Replace our weakness, suspicion and fear with your strength, hope and love. We ask you to bring peace to the transition of government in the USA in the wake of the recent violence. We pray for unity and for the restoration of order. We pray that you will renew the values of the gospel and offer a fresh realisation that you, O oh God, are sovereign. For the United Kingdom and our own nations, we pray for our political leaders to receive your wisdom in governing us and for all those in positions of authority to remember their responsibilities to those they serve. At this time, especially, we bring before you all those in medical professions and particularly those who fight a daily battle against COVID-19. Grant them your protection and energy as they care for others. Give them rest and resilience. As we enter another lockdown this week, we pray especially for all those who are struggling to cope, particularly with the challenges of isolation and who are suffering from mental illness, for those who are victims of domestic violence and feel they have nowhere to go or no one to turn to, for those who are currently ill with COVID-19 or suffering from lingering symptoms, for those who have lost loved ones to the disease and who are bereaved. May the generosity of your presence give them hope and encouragement. May it restore their health and their peace of mind. We pray also for all students and pupils who have had their lives and their education disrupted and the anxieties that this has caused this week. For teachers and lecturers who have had to adjust quickly to new ways of working at the start of this new term. And we pray for all who are homeschooling and those who are being homeschooled. We ask for patience. We thank you for the fresh air, the sea nearby and the opportunities to enjoy them and to feel refreshed. Finally, as we consider ourselves in this age of individualism and faith in material things, help us to put the needs of others first and to bless our wider community. As your people, give us opportunities to demonstrate kindness wherever we can, and to show your love to our family, neighbours, colleagues, strangers, and those who have not been kind to us. Recalling the church's verse for the year from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8. Because we loved you so much, we shared with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. 
Lord, let your light shine through us. May it guide our mission and change hearts. May we bring the assurance of knowing you to others. So, as we end these prayers, let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen.
Thank you to everyone who's taken part today. It's fantastic always to have so many people contributing in different ways to our time together on Sundays. And it never ceases to amaze me the way in which the Holy Spirit seems to bring together all the different contributions. Uh, but then maybe we shouldn't be surprised. Thank you to Robbie for bringing again our verse for 2021. Um, we come from that place, don't we, of being loved and chosen. And from that, we can step out into the things that Jesus calls us to. And again, the verse for the year is 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 8. Because we loved you so much, we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. And thank you, Johnny, for reminding us of our calling to practically help those around us. And as we go out into our week, let's go out being so filled with God's love that we can't help but share that love and hope with others we meet, both in words and deeds. Especially at this time, let's look out for those around us who might be alone or struggling, again, sharing not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Our prayer team uh, who meet before the, the, we gather on a Sunday morning had a, a piece of scripture they asked me to share with you. And that's Psalm 46, verses 1 to 3 and verse 11. That says, God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help us in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. And then verse 11. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. This is the word of the Lord to hold on to this week. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. If there are some particular things going on for, the, for you that you'd like someone to pray over for you, uh, get in touch with our prayer team uh, on prayer at stgdeal.org or else pick up the phone, ask a friend to pray for you. So let me lead us now in a final prayer. Father, we pray that throughout this week you will remind us day by day of the depth of your love for us. That each of us are your masterpiece, chosen and loved. And help us to be those who have your good news in our hearts, ready to share in both word and deed with those around us. Fill us with your spirit and be our fortress today and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So thank you for joining with us today. Uh, we've gone through every season now online and uh, the weather is crisp and uh, beautiful actually outside today. So whatever you're up to, have a good day and have a good and safe week. God bless. Thank you.